What's up guys, this is Ray, welcome to Asia Feminist, and today we'll be talking about the 2009 Japanese movie Brass Knuckle Boys, directed by Kudo Kankoro and starring Miyazaki Aoi and Sato Koichi. And I remember first seeing posters of this movie, when I, my very first time to Japan uh, in 2008, they were advertising this movie before its release. I visited in the winter of 2008, and I remember seeing all these posters <clears throat> for Brass Knuckle Boys. And the reason why I, I took notes for it, because I went through a phase uh, in my Japanese in my Japanese movie fandom, if you will, where I was just stuck on Miyazaki Aoi. I think she was like my first major Japanese celebrity crush. I was just watching all her movies, everything from her indie movies to her major releases, even a few of her dramas. So because she was in this unique looking poster that I just seen out of time, that's what attracted me to it. You know, I knew I. I could tell from a mile away that it was Miyazaki Aoi, but I didn't know exactly what type of movie uh, it was going to be. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch it in the theater just because uh, it came out February of 2009. I had only visited until uh, beginning of January 2009, but then I was able to catch it on DVD something afterwards. And yeah, it you know I think uh, in keeping in line with all the movies I like from Miyazaki Aoi, this is definitely one of them. So the story of Brass Knuckle Boys is about this talent scout by the name of Kanna, who's played by Miyazaki Aoi. And she's just on a, she's a contract worker. She's on her last day of work. And then uh, pretty much after she's done with this gig, she's going to move back to her rural hometown to help her dad uh, run his uh, his sushi shop. The dad played by Aikawa Show, by the way, hella funny appearance. But uh, on her last day, she, she picks up this video that's been going viral on the internet by this band called the Brass Knuckle Boys. And this punk band, and she's like, you know, she doesn't know anything about punk. But just, she just can recognize the energy, the way uh, the audience reacts to the band, how they, how the band feeds off of the audience's energy, and she knows there's something special about this band. So she goes and presents the band, uh, the video, to her boss. And immediately the boss is like, you know, bring these guys in, we, we can sign them immediately. He f instantly falls in love with this band because he just knows exactly, you know, he, he played in a punk band when he was younger, so he knows exactly what true punk is, and this is what it's all about. And so he offers to extend Kana's contract by a little bit just so she can go out and sign these uh, the, the Brass Knuckle Boys to their label, much to her happiness, of course. She's really excited. She, she, so she goes out and, uh, and hunts for the Brass Knuckle Boys. And so this hunt leads her to find, uh, find the Brass Knuckle Bands in a kind of different way. It turns out that the video that was uploaded to the internet was actually uploaded uh, decades ago. And so the Brass Knuckle Boys, they're not boys, they're actually old men, uh, in middle-aged dudes to be, to be exact. And uh, the person she, she comes out into contact with first is played by Sato Koichi. His character's name is Akio, and I think he was the bassist of the group. And so uh, the band, they had actually broken up in pretty for not bad terms but not the best terms and so part of this uh, journey is you know convincing uh these middle guys these middle-aged guys to uh to reform the brass knuckle boys and to work together once again under kindness charge but of course you get the whole contrast between different age different generations like these guys are just they're just, they just don't get an F. They're just like doing whatever they want. They don't, you know, th their youth is way behind them. And here's Kana. She's trying to hang on to her job because she loves her job. And they just cause all sorts of trouble for each other. And the interaction that they have is absolutely hilarious. It's a kind of comedy you can expect when you mix and match different age groups and you just see them clash. And that's though, I think, you know, when it comes to the positives of Brass Knuckle Boys, that's one of the first things this movie does well is just showing... Uh, just showing the humor that comes out of the the different the clashes between different age groups. Obviously, you have Sato Koichi and the Brass Knuckle Boys. You know they're used to doing things their way. They're they're way behind on the times. Their mindset is still back in the '80s when they were still at their peak. And they have Miyazaki Aoi. She's she represents the new one of the the new generation. Of course, she's still in her 20s. Still has her whole life ahead of her. So the way they view life is very different, and the way they handle things when uh, the, handle things that come their way is also very different. I also quite enjoyed the disputes, the the bickering between the band members, particularly between uh, Akio and Haruo, who are siblings. Haruo is played by Kimura Yuichi, who is a comedian uh, in Japan, and just seeing Sato Koichi and Kimura Yuichi just bigger just back and forth because they they have 
a, a, a long form of sibling rivalry. They absolutely hate each other. They're always trying to attack each other. And you see them carry on their sibling rivalry in front of Kanda, who's trying to, who's trying to calm them down and scold them. It's, it's funny. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. And I also enjoyed Miyazaki Aoi's character, Kanda. She, you know, she's kind of, she's uh, this girl who, this character who's, who really enjoys her job, who's trying to keep her job, but she sees that it's not going to be, that easy trying to manage the brass knuckle boys because they're off just doing their own thing you know and she's she's pulling out her hair just trying to keep them all together and even to the point she you know when she because of she's young and feisty then she starts taking charge you know one scene that comes to mind is that when they're driving on, a, on this road trip to their uh, to their tour uh you know they get signed to a tour because the, the 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 boss of her label just loves them that much so they immediately get started on the tour so they're driving around in her van and just the stuff they do to her van, like there's a broken window involved. There's a lot of farting because, you know, of course, old men, old men jokes, I guess. And it gets to the point she gets fed up and, you know, she charges them like 500 yen every time someone farts. And, uh, you know, just just the interaction when someone farts, she's trying to figure out who it is. It's the kind of stuff you can expect from older dudes, from older dude comedy. I also enjoyed the, the way everything was edited together. Um, you know, the way every, each scene flowed. Uh, from one to the next, the way the dialogue was shot one after the other. You know, great direction when you look at the dialogue and great editing when you see how everything's pieced together. It made it, it made everything just feel very quick, very high tempo from beginning to end. Of course, it pauses to breathe when it needs to, but I think for the most part, this movie chose to go with uh, a, a, an up-tempo feeling and this movie doesn't let that down and I think that's a very strong point of this movie. I also like the jabs that this movie takes at the music industry. You know, I'm not one, I'm not a huge music fan. I haven't listened to music in a long time. Um, I, don't, I really don't know what's popular nowadays but the way this movie just kind of picks jabs at the movie, at the music industry and you know, more specifically, pop music, and even the way rock music has evolved has evolved to what it is now. This movie does like you know picks jabs at it left and right, and I think this kind of meta comedy is just hilarious if you can catch it. And of course, the different characters that populate the story, you know, they do their part in not only making the group dynamic very entertaining, but also helping pick fun at the at the music industry. I mean, you have. Kanda's boyfriend who's kind of like this uh, this parody of a character who's you know who who can only play a, a certain a certain style of songs on his guitar and, and it just keeps repeating the words and you have like the, the the biggest star of the music label who who who's kind of stupid but he's he the, the audience loves him he sells the most records but whenever you see him moving around it's like he has to be guided by his bodyguards and just everyone is funny it's you know i think there is not one character in this movie that wasn't entertaining and when it comes to the negatives of the story i don't have much but i, I if anything i felt like the ending was kind of anticlimactic but i think everything leading up to the ending was fun it was a very fun ride you know overall with Brass Knuckle Boys, it's an entertaining movie from beginning to end. It's a definitely, it's a definite recommendation for me. If you like musical, if you like, it's not a musical by any kind of definition, but it's a movie about musicians. And it, it's a comedy on top of that. And it's a very cleverly crafted comedy. I think it's a type of comedy that would fit well despite what language you speak. It's a very universal type of comedy. And something that's, uh, when it comes to comedy from any kind of foreign language film, that's a bit of a, a hurdle to go over. Over, especially if you know if you're not of that culture and the source of this comedy relies not all not on I mean it relies a bit on physical comedy because you know these are like old men trying to relive their use and of course they can't do everything that they could do back in the day physically but more than that this movie ha this movie strength in its comedy relies on its uh, on its dialogue there's a lot of witty and quick dialogue and that's something that no matter how many times I watch the movie I can always come back and laugh at there's a lot of charm you know Miyazaki Aoi you know, she her performance here holds up to this day she was definitely one of my favorite actresses back when I was beginning to become a fan of Japanese cinema and this movie is one of the prime examples of what of what I would show to to, to anyone who asks you know what's a good Miyazaki Aoi movie she is absolutely fun and charming sassy's all hell in this movie entertaining 
from from uh, beginning to end, and I can't recommend this movie enough. But yes, those are my thoughts on the Brass Knuckle Boys. What did you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you really dig my content, please know you can support Asian Films via Patreon from as little as one dollar. And yeah, that's about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hope to catch you all again in the next video. Take it easy.